Um, so Claire, just tell us about your pre-teaching life. My pre-teaching lifestyle? Um, I've had several career changes in my life. I started off working in an office um, and then I decided at 25 to go to university. And when I finished university, um, I qualified as uh, an analytical chemist. And I've been working previously as um, an analytical chemist at a chemical factory working on their environmental control systems and their production analysis. So I've made a big change really from, you know, working with both office work and then into a scientific background before I made my decision to change over to teaching. Wow. Now, Claire, what on earth made you make that decision, can I ask? Was it a big sort of moment in your life or did you think, do you know what, I'm just, you know, this this is the way I want to go. What What actually spurred that decision for you? For me personally, I have children of my own and I also work with the Scouts Association. Um, we So I spend a lot of time with children as it is and we also have a lot of children who come onto our site to do, uh, where I used to work, to do um, experience days or work experience days and I really, really enjoyed working with those children, spending time with them, showing them how my job is important to the world around us and you know learning from them how they learn so it really inspired me just to think about maybe i could go on and and inspire those students from the classroom to show them what the wider world is is like uh, and you know really entice them into thinking about science and stem subjects so that science technology and maths and actually get them out there and looking at the wider world and and seeing what they could achieve in their lives. What a brilliant thing to do. So did you have a, a, an age group in mind that you wanted to, to teach specifically or did you want to kind of just do the, the training and then qualify and then go from there? For me personally, because I have a degree in science, um, science was my big go-to. It's the thing that I really enjoy. I'd gone into my children's schools and, and done science experiments actually in their schools. So for me to be able to really use my science knowledge properly, for it had to be secondary for me. I love the, the middle and junior schools, but I've got so much knowledge locked up in my head to give to students that secondary is really my goal to uh, was really my goal to go to. Exactly. Oh, brilliant stuff. And, and of course, when you get into secondary school, that's when it all steps up rather yes. a lot, doesn't it, science-wise? Yes. yes, it does. Very <laughs> much so. You know, you're really starting to build on, on real scientific concepts rather than explain it. At junior school, middle school, they're really looking at the world around them. When we get into high school, we're really looking at the nitty-gritty of how the world works, how um, we make things that we use every day and actually really beginning to understand from the atomic level how things are happening in our lives. Do you know, I can remember for a science test having to memorise uh, part of the periodic table and I think I could probably still recite it. I won't, <laughs> but, but these things, what I mean is these things that you that you learn, they, they stay yeah. with you, don't they? Even even yeah. though you don't maybe realise that they do, they really no. do. Yeah, one of the really important roles of science teaching is helping people to understand and interpret the information around us. So if you look at COVID, how we actually, as, as a general public, read the information that the government are giving you, reading all those lovely slides that Sir Chris um, Whitty, isn't it? It is Chris Whitty, yes. puts up on his screen on, on the briefings. We teach, uh, in secondary school, we teach the general public how to understand what the government is telling us when they're giving us scientific information. So it's really, really important to actually have teachers in school who can interpret that and actually help students to understand how to use that information. Absolutely. And I can imagine at the the, the age that, that you're, you're teaching, and not trying not to generalise, but probably I'm going too horribly, um, mm -hmm. there must be challenges that, that come with teaching teenagers science. Yes, definitely. And what are some of those? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very hard for students to actually really understand why they're doing it. A lot of students will say, well, why am I learning about atoms, miss? I'm never going to use atoms again. But it, it's having a really important grounding in those, in those skills. So you've got to inspire 
inspire your students, you've got, as a teacher, you've got to be able to create and design interesting lessons that actually make them think about the world around them. So it's not necessarily the information you, obviously we need to teach them the information we're trying to teach them, but we're trying to inspire them to actually understand how the world works around them. Exactly, and it's making it relevant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you've got to make your lessons relevant to them. It can be hard, you know, as a as a teacher to, to you know, engage 30 students in front of you who really just want to go back to sleep at 9 o'clock on a Monday morning and to still hold them at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon when they really just want to go home and have a drink and see their mates and have some tea and just chill out. You've got to hold their attention all the time we're dealing with their emotions, we're dealing with their interests, but we're also, you know, looking after them as, as students and as individual people. We're trying to help them to understand why they need to learn things. We're helping them to deal with their emotions. We're helping them to actually learn to be productive members of society around us and, and learn to live within the rules that society brings. So it's not just about teaching a subject. It's about helping students and young people to become rounded individuals, helping them to deal with their issues and build those relationships with them. It, it's a tough job because, you know, there's nothing more that a 16-year-old lad doesn't want to learn about than a flower and how they pollinate. Um, they they want to be out with their friends. So you, you've got to grab their interest. You've got to be their friend not their friends, but you've got to be their support and really help them to, to get through life. And it's a tough time being a student and just get through those days with them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, indeed, indeed. Is somebody hungry? Can I hear in the background? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's my kitten. <laughs> Your kitten? <laughs> it's my kitten who wants oh, me to go and feed her, but she's fine. That sounds like a hungry meow to me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're like children, aren't they? As soon as you're on the phone. As soon as you're on the phone, they want your attention, don't they? Always, oh, always. bless them, bless them. <laughs> well, do you know, Claire, it sounds like you absolutely love what you're doing. Now, can I can I just ask, um, so if I think maybe for some people, and especially at the moment where um, jobs are, are, maybe we don't feel as safe in jobs that, yeah. that we might have yeah. done, um, when do you get to the decision where you want to leave a job that pays you every month and then take that leap into training um, and maybe the financial implications that that then brings? Yeah. I mean, what swayed it for you? For me personally, it was um, a decision where I had, we just had a load of kids in at school and we'd done a big session with them and it was just like you know I really really want to do this I went on to the get into teaching website um, and had a look at the ways to train and especially for STEM subjects so science maths English um, some foreign languages there are bursaries available for us um, to actually go out there and and be funded in our training it's tougher if you want to go down the primary route but there is funding available but you really it's not something to step into lightly teaching is is a tough profession we work incredibly hard and um you know contrary to a lot of popular opinion the average working week is about 52 hours a week for for teachers so we do really put our all into teaching um to, to get that information across. We work through our holidays as well. Um, but it, it's something that if you really, really feel like you want to teach, that you've got something to give those students, then, you know, you, you make that jump and you can be brave enough to, to take take the year out and, um, and go for it. Exactly. So do you need a, a degree and then you do your PGCE on top? Or how, how does yeah. it work? Yeah, if you have a... a, a normal ordinary degree uh, honours degree you can do a PTCE so that's a one year course or like me you could uh, with my family commitments I've actually done a part time course so I did a two year course where I didn't work every day I only worked half of the week um, and so that was two years for me and you can get your PTCE and what you actually need is something called a QTS um, qualified teacher status and you can get that with your PTCE if you don't have a degree, you can actually do a degree in um, education and you can actually do your degree at 
to be a teacher. So you would do a three or four year degree to qualify to be a, a teacher. You can, even if you don't have any A-levels, you can do like me. I had no A-levels when I went and did my degree. I did a foundation year, so I did my A-level equivalent in a year at university. So even if you have no qualifications, you can still access and can still make your way up to being a teacher. Great. And so there are lots of different sort of pathways in. And do you, do you think that you would go back to what you were doing before or do you think this is it, I found what I love, um, you know, this is what I'm going to stick with now? No, no, I, I'm definitely sticking with being a teacher. It's, I love going to school. I love spending time with the kids. You have good days, you have bad days, but actually to see the light dawn in their eyes when you're trying to get through a really difficult concept or, um, you know, you, you've got a child who's really struggling or, or they're struggling with something at home and you can help them with that and, you can, uh, and they come and say thank you. It's it's worth its weight in gold. It really is. I can imagine. And I can hear that you love it as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Well, Claire, thank, thank you. you so much for joining me. You better go and feed that kitten of yours. Um, <laughs> what What's kitten's name? That's Mavis. Mavis. Hello, Mavis. lovely Mavis. Bless her heart. Uh, well, oh. go and have a lovely day. And I, and I hope you're able to um, to enjoy some of your half term anyway in I the sunshine. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much, Claire. It's lovely to have you on the show today. And that is Claire Massa, who is, uh, well, who is somebody who had a, a career change and went into teaching. So the um, Department of Education, yeah, are offering various ways uh, through Now Teach to um, to actually get into teaching if that's something that you have thought about.